When I found out the king was gone, I knew somehow I had to make sure his legacy lived on, and I plan on doing that for the rest of my days here on the God Green Earth. Jeff Stewart is a true child of the 80s. He was raised just as much by television and movies as he was by his parents. Given his first camera when he was just two years old, he hasn't been seen without one since. His love of photography and his gift of storytelling propelled him to attend NYU and Temple University to pursue a degree in filmmaking and creative writing. In his travels through life, Jeff has been a comic book writer, professional photographer, radio show host, and just a generally fantastic individual. I am pleased to welcome Jeff Stewart in the studio for WNSR New School Radio. I managed to purloin this picture of it today at the Couturier's luncheon. Oh. You're listening to New Talk on WNSR New School Radio. Dr. Maya Angelou is one of the most renowned and influential voices of our time. Hailed as a global renaissance woman, she has literally done it all. Dr. Angelo has served on two presidential committees, was awarded the Presidential Medal of Arts in 2000, the Lincoln Medal in 2008, and has received three Grammy Awards. President Clinton requested that she compose a poem to read at his inauguration in 1993. Her reading of her poem, On the Pulse of Morning, was broadcasted live around the world. In 2011, President Barack Obama awarded her with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Dr. Angelo has received over 30 honorary degrees and is a Reynolds Professor of American Studies at Wake Forest University. Dr. Angelo's words and actions continue to stir our souls, energize our bodies, and liberate our minds. They also heal our hearts. I would like to welcome Dr. Angelo to WNSR New School Radio. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Angelo. How are you? I'm splendid, thank you. And you? I'm doing great. I appreciate you taking the time to... I would like to welcome State Senator Chris Larson to WNSR. Senator Larson, please take me back to when you first learned that the governor was going to uh, strip union workers of their rights uh, and add uh, collective bargaining to the law in Wisconsin and how you felt about that. Yeah, well, it was um, back in early February where all of a sudden it started out as a rumor of uh, this being something that the uh, Walker administration was considering. I was going to ask you, there were a lot of conflicting reports. I heard so many stories, it wasn't even funny about what actually went down. Um, you rode uh, to Illinois with three other senators, am I correct? Yeah. Well, there were three in total. Uh, explain what you guys were talking about as you were riding over to Illinois. To Illinois? Honestly, it was, um, it was just practical stuff. Like, okay, I need to figure out, you know, for me, I had my car. And uh, it was, you know, so I could get around if I needed to. But for Senator Miller, who rode with me, um, his concern was making sure he had a neighbor stop over at his house because his wife had left town. His whole family went on vacation, and they were expecting to meet him to meet up with them, and she put on a crock pot for him. So his concern was making sure they shut off the crock pot at his house. He said, okay, I'm probably not going to be home for dinner tonight. <laughs> um, you know, the other two senators, it was. Miss Susan Fails Hill, it's so good to have you here. I'm thrilled to be um, here on this gorgeous day. <laughs> yes, and I am very excited because your book, I've been telling everyone about One Flight Up because I've been saying to everyone, I don't want to get married. Marriage is so difficult. You have all these problems. And in your book, it's a perfect excuse to tell people this is why you should not get married. Uh, it's about four women. Uh, yes. who are growing up in a very sort of ritzy uh, mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And at age 37, they find themselves just having a heck of a time doing not-so-nice things to their spouses. Exactly. Uh, so tell exactly. me about the book in a nutshell. Well, I, I wanted to write the book for the very reason that you cite, that marriage is presented, particularly to women these days, as the, the brass ring, the ultimate goal of one's life. And the disillusion of the goal. Downtown, or they're not going to want to work downtown, and they're certainly not going to want to visit downtown. And nothing could be further from the truth. Take me into the future for Lower Manhattan. What do you see, or what do you would you like to see happening in terms of the future revitalization going five, ten years from now? 
Well, I think the residential growth will continue. I think we've seen a doubling of the population in Lower Manhattan in the last five years, and our population is set to double again in the next 10 years. And so I think you're going to continue to see many young families move into the Lower Manhattan neighborhood because of the schools, because of the parks, because of the access to the waterfront, and also because of the fact that we're community survivors. I like uh, jazz and I like opera. I mean, it, does, it would depend on what time of day and what it happened to put me in a mood for me to say what my favorite is. If I can make a quick request, I, I watched a video of you giving remarks at the Honorable uh, Coretta Scott King's funeral. You opened up with a song. It goes, I open my mouth to the Lord, and yes, I won't take... Yes. Would you mind reciting a couple of lines of oh, that? Oh, Mr. Paul, oh, thank you very much. He says, I open my mouth to the Lord, and I won't turn back, no. I will go, I shall go, I'll see what the end is going to be. Bravo. <laughs> I really Thank appreciate you. you doing that. Thank you very much, Mr. Paul. Best wishes to you. Thank you very in much. In your career and in your life. Oh, that's, that's, you don't know how much that means coming from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. You're listening to WNSR New School Radio. This is Roy Paul.